My name's Kurt Bittinger. Uh, for the last 10 years, my wife and I've lived on and off in Turkey. We have a, um, um, I'll talk more about it, but uh, so tonight I want to share some of the photographs I've taken of Turkey. I also want to talk about Turkey. Uh, Turkey has the largest unreached population in the world. Unreached people group. Uh, thanks. Jerry's my wife. She's my, she'll keep me straight. <laughs> um, I want to talk about my photography style. It's a hobby. I see photography also as an art. So I play with a wide variety of things um, that I like to do. Um, I do everything. I do landscapes, portraits, um, people, street photography events. I've done weddings, flowers, birds. I've tinkered with video, but after seeing all the equipment here that people have with video, I, I'm kind of intimidated. Uh, <laughs> so um, I have a drone that's in Turkey. Um, so I have a wide variety of things. I shoot with a Canon that I've had for 10 years. No, nothing fancy, it's full frame though, and it does me well. Um, I, I have three lenses, I have a 28 to 135. I like shooting with the 50 because you gotta get close to your subject. And then I have a telephoto um, that goes to 200. Um, I use Lightroom and Photoshop and processing. I like the process, so I shoot in RAW. And uh, with uh, a full frame camera with telephoto, I can crop in uh, and get images that I like that if I had a 400, I'd get closer, but I don't have that. Uh, I share all my pictures. Uh, in Turkey, there's a lot of community that goes on, um, on walks, events, things like that, and you'll see some of the pictures I do. I have a Smug Mug site. I put all the pictures there. I send a link out, and anybody that wants them can get them and download them. So it's a way of sharing uh, work. Uh, the Republic of Turkey. Uh, it was a part of the Ottoman Empire from 1453 when uh, the Byzantine Empire fell and uh, when Const uh, um, Istanbul was conquered. Uh, and in 1923, Ataturk defeated the Greeks after World War I. And in 1923, they had a population exchange as part of the treaty with Greece. So all the Greeks that were living in Turkey, that were born in Turkey, that were raised in Turkey, that were basically part of the Turkish community were exported, deported, out of the country back to Greece. And all the Turks that lived in uh, Turkey, I mean in Greece, were brought back into um, um, Turkey. So part of their national identity to be a Turk is to be a Muslim. Um, that's just part of the identity that they have. The capital is Ankara, um, 83 million people. It's about the same square miles as Washington, Oregon, and California. So it gives you kind of an idea how large it is. Um, it has 4,500 miles of coastline, and it borders eight countries. Um, so there's wide variety. Part of it's even in uh, Europe. Um, Turkish um, is the language. Here's a map. Um, and you can see the Ge Georgia, Armenia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, where all the stuff's going on is down here in Gaziantep currently. Then you go into Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Um, I got a better map. But these islands here are all part of Greece. Um, so where do you, where do you go? I'll show you. I got another map. Oh. Turkey's about 900 miles uh, horizontally and about 400 miles vertically. Um, there. So, and it has about 1,700 miles of borders, land borders. So um, it's quite a diverse country um, in that. We live in Kosh down here with the red dot. Um, Antalya's here, Finicky, Fetier. It's, uh, that's where um, we live. It's right on the Mediterranean coast. I'm gonna show you pictures from uh, 
Miletus, that uh, Paul went to, Ephesus, Antioch of Poseidon, that uh, Paul's on the first missionary trip went to, um, Cappadocia, that's one of our favorite places. We have spent a lot of time in, in Cappadocia. Um, going on to Apokchik, uh, there's some Georgian churches up in this area that are interesting. Uh, there's another Tibeti church. All these churches are way up in the mountains. It's amazing. And then uh, Somalia Monastery, which is a Greek monastery. Um, so this is, this is Kosh. We actually live in Gerkseki there. Um, and we're between Patara, which is this coast here that uh, Paul went to, and Myra, which is in this area here. Um, there's a lot of, this is part of the Lycian, the first culture, whoops, what happened? There we go. The first culture through this with the Lycians, you'll see a lot of Lycian tombs, and the Greeks and the Romans, um, the Byzantines were in here, so there's a quite variety of architect and area. Let's see if I can get this to go. This is this is Kosh, the old harbor. This is Gerkseki. This is, they call the Armada. And you can't see it over here. This is Mace, which is a Greek island. Sure. And what is it, about 10 kilometers from our window? Five. Five kilometers out from our, as a cove flows from our window to, there, to Mace. The furthest easternmost of all the Greek islands. Yeah. Tiny. Tiny. Population 200. So I put, this is a guy, Peregrine paragliding that's very popular there, but you can see the gives you kind of a good idea what the area looks like. Uh, you can see Mace is kind of a, a horseshoe there that the paragliding is now kind of in front of. This is the Kosh here, that's the old harbor. And this is taken from a uh, kind of, they call it a Kosh over, outlook, overlook there. Um, but it's fun to walk up there. If you climb up from the town, it's quite uh, strenuous, but there's a back way in there to there. But it's fun to watch these guys paraglide. And this is, we're up in here. Whoops. Kosh is known for its beautiful sunsets. Uh, there's a photography club in Kosh, and one of the most favorite <laughs> photographs is the sunsets. Because <laughs> they're, they're just tremendous. Uh, the clouds come over, and you can have great sunsets. We live in a village. Gerseki is a village. Where does that happen? Is a village. And so... Um, where, where we go? There we go. Let me back up. This is our house where we sit. Um, we call it Spa for the Soul. When we went there, we bought this property to do a contemporary retreat center. So anybody that wanted to come for prayer, artistic things, um, needed a, a safe place to be. Uh, we've had people that felt like their lives were threatened and came here and uh, felt comfortable enough here. Um, Gerseki is kind of a working man's, working man's and working woman's village. They have a lot of different things going on. Um, it's not uncommon to see the village women taking care of cows down below our house there. Um, Suleiman is a local carpenter. He did most of our cabinetry work, and his, he's... Uh, Quite an amazing carpenter. He uses very simple tools. He'll take a block like this and he will cut down uh, the size of lumber that he needs. He doesn't go buy it to the store for a two by four or two by six. He will cut it down, plane it, and build whatever he wants. One of the fun things in Turkey is tea, tea time. We love tea. Uh, and this is in his workshop, and he's been working and took his pictures, and so we sit down and have tea together. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing, 
we've become our neighbors. Uh, we have Turkish neighbors who have been very great to us. Um, and they have a son, Orkun. And uh, this is an event they asked us to be a part of there um, as grandparents there. And this is part of the Turkish tradition and, uh, is males get circumcised, not at birth, but at 10 years or is eight years? Between 10 and 13. 10 and 13 years, yeah. right of manhood. Um, and so part of that is they have also a celebration and they dress uh, Orkun here on the left. He's kind of a prince. You know, they dress him up and part of the uh, or, um, celebration is that he stands up and people in the crowd, people, relatives and things like that, come and pin money and gold coins to his, to his uh, scarf here. Uh, so it was very interesting to do uh, there, to see that. This is a picture of Kosh Old Town. Um, it's cobblestones and you kind of get an idea of what um, the old style of building were. You do have apartments above that look down on the tourist section. This is part of the tourist section. In the center, um, they, a lot of times they'll have things going on. This is, they have a Kosh tourism thing and they were having an event. And so I went down and photographed it. Um, there, they're playing music and people were sitting and drinking and fellowshipping and having a good time. Um, so she was fun to photograph with uh, playing the violin and um, so it was a good time. And most people, you can go and photograph them. They're not uh, necessarily concerned about that. The other thing that we were a part of in Turkey is there's a group of families that are first cousins that get together and have picnics. And it's a small crowd. <laughs> the generation that's our age was nine siblings. And so these are all of, the first cousins are all of their siblings. Yeah. So, and then the progeny. So they have a great time together. It's kind of like going to a church function. They, have, they might have, uh, they'll have a barbecue, and I've got some pictures, but sack races, volleyball, soccer. You know, they just have a great time dancing, too. Uh, so in Turkey, their barbecue is not, they don't have a Weber or a green egg or anything <laughs> like that. Everything is done on open fires. And so they build a fire in this. Uh, so she's doing that, and they throw everything directly on the fire. Uh, and then when it gets done, huh? Except, well, yeah, they have there. I also ought to say that the headscarf here is something that village women wear. It doesn't necessarily mean it related to the Islamic faith. It doesn't mean that they're not followers of uh, the Muhammad, but it's, it's kind of, it's a dr village dress that you can see here. So after they put those things on, this is eggplant, they'll chop it up uh, and make salads. They have great barbecues. And then as a group, they'll sit around and enjoy fellowship on the ground. Um, and, and people will sit in their family groups there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they have um, a rack there they have meat on. It's a great celebration. And the kids love it. I enjoy taking pictures of kids. Um, they have great expressions. They love uh, life. And they're, they're fun to look at and fun to photograph. <laughs> I mean, she's having a great time there. Yep, gum. And this little boy, he's carrying a bucket there. He's just having a great time uh, playing out there. He's, not very old, but he's walking and uh, just having a good time. But also the, uh, I guess my age group, <laughs> um, 
they enjoyed each other. They have uh, wonderful times. And they are great to photograph um, there. And you can, he's out just relaxing. And some of the older women um, there are quite, uh, you know, I enjoy looking at her face. Uh, she has expressions, she's confident uh, there. Uh, when I was there, this was the oldest man in the village at that time, and he since he's passed away. And I think he was around 100 or something like that. Um, but, um, and he grew up in a village, you know, he's not had all the luxuries that we have had. One of the things that, whoops, there we go, that when we're there in the wintertime um, until COVID, they used to do Sunday walks. And they would uh, organize walks. They would take you out to a place. You would walk along the Lycian Trail or other trails there. And uh, I would be taking pictures along the way. And, um, and there's great scenery. Uh, this was one of the trails you can see off they're fairly close looking down off the cliff uh, there. Um, people have a great time. You get people from Turks, Germans, um, Americans, British, a wide variety of people that go on these walks. This is called Butterfly Valley. One of the things I, I enjoy is taking uh, panoramics. And this is where I get into Photoshop. Um, because I think sometimes it's, when you just crop it, you don't see the mag magnificent scenery is here. Butterfly Valley's down here. To get there, you have to walk all the way down. We didn't do that. But it's, you can see how cl clear the water is. It's gorgeous. We also have visitors <laughs> and take them on walks. Wayne had a great time on that day walking. Um, and in the summer months, this valley here will be uh, with farmers, and there'll be sheep down there, and uh, they use all the land. This is Kasaba Valley, another panoramic picture. The reason I wanted to show you this is because what's happening in Turkey a lot is you see all these greenhouses. More and more greenhouses are popping up, and so uh, the agriculture is going to greenhouses. What you can't see is right here, there's a church. There it is, Deren as a church. And it's just, it, they're not taking care of it. It's just there. You can walk through it. There's no fees. But you can see how the uh, greenhouses are right up against it. Um, and so it's, it's a great time to go out and go walking. Um, you have villages there. You can walk most any place there, sit down, enjoy lunch, and look at the church. Do you know what type of church that was? It's a Byzantine. Oh. Most of this stuff that ruins are Byzantine churches. The other thing is uh, these are uh, Kenii. It's fairly close to Kosh. Um, it's up on a hill. They have an amphitheater as well as these Lycian tombs. And I think there's one, two, one to 200 Lycian tombs, 300 tombs on this mountain that are all like this shape. And you can see that they're, they're broken into uh, people looking for anything valuable. Um, but all these places you can wander in. We've camped up here one time. And uh, in the middle of the night, we got rained on, but uh, it was fun. Uh, Patara is a Ro first Greek, but then Roman uh, city that was, it's west of us, about 40 kilometers. Um, here you can see the uh, entry gate is there, as well as Lycian tombs. Um, this is a large site. Um, at one time, you'd be able to sail into the harbor here, but it's all silted in now. Um, and it's kind of marshy. 
this would have been the main walkway into the city. The port would have been on the left-hand side there. Um, and so you have been a colonnade. You'd have shops on the left and right there. Um, but it does have a beautiful beach. Um, and um, one of the things about photography that I'm starting to work with more is having people in your picture. Um, if you could block her out, you know, you'd see the beach, but you would be uh, missing some of the aspects of uh, scale yeah. there. Yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful beach. It's a popular place to go. They'll do uh, surf sailing out here and things <laughs> like that. Um, now going 40 miles or 40 kilometers to the east, we hit Myra and Nolbaba. Um, again, Paul stopped here uh, and on, on his way to Rome. Uh, Myra was the leading city in the Lycian times um, and uh, <clears throat> during the Bath Byzantine time, this became a popular place for the Christians. Uh, Myra was mentioned in the New Testament uh, here. Uh, so this is the Colosseum, and off to the left, you'll see some Lycian tombs. Um, and these are the tombs. They're all built in, carved out of rock into, uh, into the face of the cliff here. And so the prominent people would be buried in these. Uh, and um, one thing that is noticed here is that uh, we know St. Nicholas, Santa Claus. There is a bishop. Bishop, he was of uh, Myra. And uh, there is a church there that is called No Baba. But it's St. Nicholas, uh, the bishop there, was, uh, started this. And this church is dedicated to him. Uh, and it started in the third century. So it is, again, kind of a Byzantine church. Um, they still, once a year, the Greek Orthodox will come down here and hold a service. And we got here just at the end. And you can see a couple of, they're taking down uh, there. So this is a very important site for Russian tourists or Greek Orthodox that will come here, there. Uh, I do have sound, I'm sorry. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this. Jeff Johnson came and we went there and I've got a, he sang in the church. And I don't know if you can. Jesus, keep us in your love. Spirit, keep us in your truth. Bless us, God of grace, we Bless the path on which we go. Bless the earth beneath our souls. Bless us, God, who give love. It has very good acoustics. Um, and uh, there we go. So it was. People come in there and pray. We've gone there, and it's just a very peaceful place uh, to go. There's a lot of frescoes that are still preserved on the walls um, at that time. And there's just all sorts of these uh, frescoes are there. And then you have tourists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's changed clothes. <laughs> so, but this is at the entryway. There's some frescoes above them. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful place to visit and just go, pray, meditate uh, there. Going farther west, Baffa Lake used to be a part of the Aegean Sea. Uh, but it silted in. Uh, again, a 
panoramic. And they do fishing in here. It's, it has a high saline um, content. The geology is quite different. Uh, you can see the geology here is different from um, around Kosh and in that area. Um, It's not totally salt water, but it it's, has a higher concentration of salt. And they do fishing in there, and uh, I'll show you there's realms there. They have pretty suns or rainbows um, there. But you can also see the geology is vastly different it's, uh, than what we've seen there. This is Yilder Monastery. Again, you just walk up there. It's there. You can walk through it. You can camp there. You can do, I mean, it's just there. Um, and the walls are standing. Um, and again, it's up in the mountains. It's amazing to think about where they put these monasteries. They weren't easy access. You had to climb to get there. And in the rocks, there are still frescoes. Wow. Um, that this rock was curved. And uh, so you can see part of the Byzantine, uh, during the Byzantine time, they were painters Absolutely. depicting uh, different things. In the same area as Ephesus, pictures of Ephesus. Ephesus uh, is important in Paul, yep. is Paul and his church. Um, this is the library there. Uh, you can see it's quite a huge building. Yeah, it's tall. Looks better. It looks better on my screen. Is that a second floor? Yeah, it's a second floor. Uh, so, and this is the Colosseum. If you think about in Acts um, 19, where they had the riot, they spent two hours shouting uh, in this. What what are they? I forgot the. Dimitri is, you know, great or wonderful and things like that. And uh, so you can see, kind of give you an idea. You can see pitch people up here. Oh, wow. That's big. Like to keep like 5, yeah. So it's a great place to come and shout for a couple hours. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And this is because, again, Pitar is salted in. Uh, I mean, not um, Ephesus used to be a port. This was the main street going in from the port. Uh, you can see this is looking down at the top, walking down. They have all sorts of uh, different aspects there. You can see the library down there. And off in the corner would be where the port oh, okay. came in. But it's March now. One of the things, it's Apollo Temple and Miletus were again uh, Greek and Roman. Uh, this is the temple. Um, it's quite a large structure. Uh, it's hard to gauge how big it is, uh, or how large it is. They have fancy carvings yeah. on that. Uh, but you can walk through the columns. And there's Jerry right there. So it is huge. Well, in that first photograph, you can see how tall one of the columns. Yeah. And um, one, one more. Yeah, it's like that tall. It's, I assume all those columns were that tall. Yeah, at one time, they're just, you see, these are all parts of columns that are just scattered. Uh, so it's, it's a huge site. But you think about the construction and the time to do something like this without all the modern technology, it's amazing what they could do. Um, because all that's very incredible. Fine detail. Yes. Intricate. Incredible. Thank you. <laughs> um, one of the things, at the time of Paul's, there was 11 mile walk from. The Apollo Temple to Miletus. And this is Miletus, there's not much there except for the uh, 
Colosseum there. Um, and um, most everything's uh, down. There's, it's swampy, but at one time it used to be, there used to be a, um, a kind of a pilgrim reach between these two cities, 11 miles. Um, Cappadocia. We really enjoy Cappadocia. It is, again, the geology is unique. Yes, this is called Love Valley. These are fairy chimneys. Um, and it's, they're amazing structures. Uh, so that is a photo? It looks like a painting. Yeah, it's a photo. It's a panoramic photo. So, um, it kind of a, you can look down through there. And they got trails that you just walk through these. Um, and it, it's fun to walk through and look at them and uh, explore. There's a lot of uh, valleys that you walk through that uh, are, are fun to walk through um, that are different. One of the big things in Cappadocia, though, are the balloon rides. Oh, wow. And so I haven't been up in a balloon, but I get up early in the morning <laughs> to go out and photograph the balloons. And uh, they're, they are great to photograph. This day, they had a great sunrise, and they're blowing up. Um, this kind of gives you a picture of what's going. They're huge, but you can see they have all the trucks come in. They bring in people. Um, it's quite an ordeal um, for people because they'll bring them out, they'll go out, They'll do a safety briefing. They'll come out, and at the end of the day, they normally have champagne or something like that to celebrate their ride. Um, but I'm not the only one that likes to go out and take pictures. <laughs> these, uh, these women were having a great time trying to get themselves with balloon pictures in the back, so I couldn't resist. I had to take a picture of them right. taking pictures. So, uh, and you can see quite a difference in dress, and, but they're having a great time there. And it's become more popular now for people to get up early in the morning and go out and watch the balloons. They got four wheelers out there and things like that. Um, so this is kind of gives you an, a flavor, another panoramic of kind of all the balloons that come up in the air. And they launch them. Uh, and they'll fly up, they'll, not on this picture, but there's valleys and they'll go down in the valleys and they go up. This is, um, <sighs> that must be uh, Gurme there. Uh, so it's, it's just fun to go out and watch. And they got all over. Um, my favorite church is called the Column Church. It's again, this church is carved out of rock. Oh, neat. It's a cave. It's, a cave. it's basically a cave. Um, and it's hard to tell how tall it is, so you have to do some fun photography. Yeah. I don't have, I can't do double images, so I have to take two pictures and merge them in Photoshop. Um, but it is a huge structure. It'd be like going into uh, a church in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about how you go about, you look at a wall and say, OK, I want to build a church. <coughs> and have a three-dimensional image <coughs> excuse me, of what you want that church to be. And it's just amazing. This is the ceiling. So do they start from the top down, or do they go from bottom up? My guess is top down. It's just kind of—it's amazing because it's—it'd uh, be like something you see in Europe. It's just not as elaborate, but it's—you go in there, and it's just a wonderful place to be. It's cooler, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can see that it's not built; its material's been removed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
So all the materials have been removed. Where they took the materials, how long it took, I don't know. But it's 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 uh, sandstone, but it's got some volcanic ash and things like that what in it. Was it built? It's Byzantine, so it'd be third and fourth centuries. Um, so during the Byzantine time, during the third, third and fourth centuries, you had Cappadocia was known as a place of um, Christian education. You had scholars there. <clears throat> St. Basil was a part of the Korean, or the Nicene. He went to the council for the Nicene Creed. He was a bishop in this area. As did Gregory and... Um, St. Nicholas, yeah. yeah. One of the other churches that we really enjoyed, but it's not open to the public. Uh, we happen to be visiting down below. There's another church, and uh, Jerry speaks enough Turkish. The guy asked us if we wanted to go see a church. This is called the Hidden Church, and it basically sits on a cliff. You have steep stairs. If you miss, there's a cliff right in here. But it is an amazing oh. church. Wow. You've got, uh, we say these are our great clouds of witnesses. Awesome. But more frescoes. More frescoes. And, uh, nice. and even on the ceiling, the ceiling is decorated with frescoes. And it's, they carve things out. Uh, these are only a couple churches. It's just an amazing place to go because you have so many churches with frescoes that have all been carved out of rock. They've carved into the rock. Not only churches, but towns. This is Orta Hisar. Mm -hmm. This is a castle. They called Orta Hisar means middle castle. This is the town here. Uh, and all these villi villages here they'll have part of the, the house that's been carved into the rock. Oh, okay. uh, and so uh, we like this village. There's a couple of valleys. So you can walk up this valley and go to, there's another church up there, uh, Balkan Church. You can walk this one, and you can walk all the way into another town. And there's some churches along this way. Uh, this was in the wintertime. Uh, it's cooler. Um, yeah. So it's just a fascinating place. Uh, we like to stay here. We normally stay in a place that's somewhere up in here. Um, and uh, there's just a lot of walking. And uh, also at night, you can go out and uh, I took out looking at the castle. Mount, um, I'm going to. Icris, I can't even pronounce the name. It's a volcanic <laughs> mountain. Uh, er, Ergesis, er something like that. Um, Ergesis? Ergesis, yeah. Um, and so you can see a lot of these haven't been reworked. You can go out and buy them, and they're probably for sale. But more and more, they're redoing uh, some of these. They'll uh, make them uh, really nice places to stay. Another place that we like to go is Ithlara Valley. That's really washed out. Mm. Um, it's a long valley that kind of winds around. And again, you'll see church after church built into the sides of these cliffs here. Um, let's, see. Uh, let's see if I can get that to go. Yeah, this is a drone. That valley is 14 kilometers long, so about nine miles. Nine yeah. Miles. Wow. A great place to do a drone. Yeah, until I bounced it off the wall. <laughs> yeah. I did. It was a very sad moment. Uh, so, and this is in the winter time. There. Yeah, I crashed my drone here. I bounced it off the wall. I have the video of it going, hitting the wall, then you can see it going all the way down. <laughs> it was a sad time. <laughs> um, 
Antioch of Pisida is also on Paul's first missionary journey. Uh, this would be the main square that goes in. Um, there's amphitheaters here. There was uh, an old uh, mosque or sanctuary. There was, they think they had an old uh, synagogue in this city they covered. Um, but what I found fascinating was the aqueduct yeah. that went into the city. Wow. Um, it's drawing. quite an amazing structure. Again, a drone. Um, so somebody did a drone shot. That's a drone shot, yeah. Yeah, I crashed the drone, had somebody take it from Turkey to the States, get it repaired, and they got it back. Um, going to the east, northeast, we went to Saha Village, and there's a Georgian church there. But to get there, you can see that winding road. Yeah. We're way up in the mountains uh, there. And uh, <laughs> it's an amazing trip. And then you come up there, and you see... A church, a Georgian church. It's, you think, how do they get all that stuff? But it's an amazing, this church wasn't open, and there's a village that's done, uh, grown up around it. Um, and we were there, and we happened to, uh, with some other people, and um, we were invited in to a family And they pick mulberry bush, mulberries, and they boil them here, and they make pekmez, or kind of a, what is it, a molasses type? They take the mulberries that they boiled and they put them in here and they press them. And then the juice comes out in here. We went to another, this is an, um, a Georgian church that we went up to. Again, the church is way up in the mountains. Um, it's a beautiful valley. Um, gorgeous. When we were there, this is the church. When we were there, there was a group of men and women from Georgia. Yeah, it's Azerbaijan. These are Azeris. Well, they were Azeris. Okay. Okay. And they came here, and they had candles lit, and uh, they made a bush there. Um, and let me get this going. It's still, you know, the third... Probably a little bit later. Oh, okay. But here you can see the, the structure. And there's the valley. Wow. Good place to hang out and pray. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and all the churches are uh, built in a cross. There. Very true. Huh? So... Yeah, eastern, northeastern Turkey. So, um, this is the um, Su no, Sulema, no, that's a drone shot. Sumela Monastery. We happened, it's built, um, I had some notes on it. It's uh, about 1,600 years old. It's 4,000 feet no, above. Okay, 1600s, built on a 4,000 foot cliff. Wow. And there's a valley that runs through here with a river that uh, goes through there. Yeah. Most of it, we could tour, except uh, there was a section that was still closed off. This section here. 
there's a bunch of mosaics on the sides of the wall, and they've had, you can see them here, that uh, they're not letting tourists come through right at this time. They used to, but uh, not anymore at this. This was just reopened about a month before we went there. 